Kristen, joining the show once again. Kristen, how's it going? Good. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. Where are you still in the States right now? Yes. Okay. Um, you I'm ready in Charlotte. For... Gotcha. Preparing okay. for the tour finals. And then you're headed back? Exactly. Okay, fantastic. How long have you been over here so far? Um, I actually went back after Deglo just for one week. Okay. Um, so I had a short trip home, but um, I've been on the go basically since July. Jeez. What's your, uh, what's your go-to on a plane? What do you do to pass the time? Uh, I watch movies, I guess, but, um, sometimes I just, uh, mm, use the opportunity to sit in silence. I, I'm, I'm very bad at sleeping at planes. Oh no. So yeah, I, I do Sudokus. Yeah. Quite that, like random stuff, what everybody does, I guess. That is like a trend going on where there's just guys that are just sitting and just staring at the seat in front of them for the entire <laughs> flight. <laughs> I don't know what they call it. It's called something. I don't know, but it's like, people are like, I just did a five and a half hour flight and they're just staring at the seat in front of them, not doing anything. <laughs> I could never do it, but Hey, recommend inside out Two If you haven't watched that yet, Great movie. So if you have that on your plane on your way back, highly recommend it. Love it. Love it. Uh, okay, unless you okay. haven't watched the first one. If you haven't watched the first one, you can't watch the second one. I think I have. It sounds very familiar. It's like with the little, the little, uh, it's an animation movie, but it's like the little people inside your head with all your different emotions. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The second one's great. Second one's great. All right. Well, let's just jump it right into you finally won this tournament. This was like the one tournament you couldn't win. And by couldn't win, you got second the only two other times you've played it. So it's not like you were like struggling at this event. Um, What was the difference? Is there anything you could pinpoint this tournament compared to the other two that you, uh, you know, fell just short? Um, I think it's tapping into that right mindset that I also mentioned in my post tournament uh, post in Instagram. Um, and also I was listening to Missy's interview after MVP. MVP is another tournament that I've, uh, placed second in four times in a row, I think, or maybe not in a row, but four times I I've participated mm-hmm. and I, I, there's this thought that sort of stuck with me. And she said that in the morning, she uh, she was thinking, I'm going to jump into that pond no matter what, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking that I haven't really had this hunger to win for a long time. I sort of go out there and try my best. And and I feel like uh, the last couple of months, I mean, I've been playing good but um, not great, I guess, or, or been making some really, really stupid mistakes. Like on short approaches, I just go OB or do something that I don't expect of myself. So now going into that final round, I really stayed in the present and told myself that this is your opportunity to be confident and be strong and, and you know you got this. You have the skills. You just have to execute and, and don't be afraid. And um, I feel like uh, that's exactly what I did. And I felt like myself again, like uh, me in 2023. And it was very good. It, it, I had a great feeling. There's a, there's a theory real quick, Yuli, and then you, there's a theory that you haven't won MVP because you don't want to jump in the lake. Do you <laughs> want to address that theory? You know, it, it's kind of true, I guess, because, <laughs> because every year I'm thinking I'm probably going to be the first one who says they're not going to do it <laughs> because I don't want to go in there. Um, but I still want to win, of course. Uh, so maybe I just have to get over that hurdle and make peace with jumping into the pond. Let's see next year. Get in one of those, like, uh, what are those, the, the Zorbs? 
like those big balls that you can get in the inside. Yeah. So you can just jump in. So you're, you're in the lake, but you're in a big Zorb ball. Oh and that gosh, way you don't have to hilarious. be, in, you don't have to be in the water. Yeah. Is, yeah. We'll see how it goes. Is there like a different feeling for the throw pink? Because it's not an elite series. It's not a major. It's like the only tournament that's like for both MPO and FPO. It's like just kind of chunked in the middle of just being an A tier, but obviously it has the coverage. It has a big payout. Is there like mm-hmm. any different feeling for you playing that? Or do you still think same mindset as major, same mindset as an elite series? I can't say that I have the same mindset that I have in a major uh, because I just know it isn't a major, uh, but uh, at the same time, we're playing on one of the most iconic courses in disc golf. Yes. And I also had the pleasure of playing with the men in 2019. I think that was like the last year um, women uh, were able to qualify. And after COVID, they made uh, throw pink. So, yeah, I mean, I don't even know what kind of stance to have on this matter. Uh, I just tried to have the same attitude when I'm going to an Elite Series event. Uh, I feel like it sort of has the same vibe to it. Uh, And the payouts have been crazy and the field is stacked. So, yeah, it's a very special event, and I think it, it's major worthy. Um, I don't know how to do it, though, uh, or if it's even possible uh, to fit so many people there. Uh, but, yeah, it, it has a very mm, different uh, vibe from, like, a normal A tier. I think you have a lot of pull. All you have to say on here is look in the camera and say <laughs> it should be a major. <laughs> Yeah, I have would you love ever, it. Have you I ever been it. told why it's not a major? Have you guys ever had anyone mm-hmm. explain that to you guys? I guess because we already have four majors and we have the U.S. Women's Tournament. Um, maybe that's why. And I don't know how to like, make majors or how they change these kinds of things. And I've been staying out of that business because I don't feel ex- like it's my place to mm-hmm. like contemplate about yeah. this. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a major worthy course. And, um, I know that women also love to play there and it feels very big and grand and, and it's a, it's a, it's a great tournament. What was it like your, one of your top four courses? Top four courses. Mm. Cause I know it's one of my, it's, I think it's my favorite. You got to remember, yeah. Yuli, she plays a bunch of European courses that are really good. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I was I trying to even... sneak it into the top four. I, th- I kind of put the top four question on it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're putting me in a tough place. I, know, I think I it's I'm it's sorry. definitely uh, a great venue. And like I said, it has a lot of history. So, so it makes it even more special. And every year I feel like there's so many fans out there um, and everything they do around the tournament that's not related to the course is also super awesome, I feel like. Uh, but I do I do love going to Vermont every year. Um, I know these courses over there are probably shorter than the rest of the courses that we play on tour, maybe. But um they also have something special in them. Uh, I do love Des Moines. I've been doing very well there. I had to miss it this year and probably have to miss it next year. Um, yeah, and I, I love to. I love uh, Tampere. Mm. I think it's a great course. Yeah, I think everyone loved that course. Mm-hmm. Um, would you be opposed if the PDGA came out next year and said, "Hey, we're going to actually"? instead of doing U S women's as, because obviously that is like a big women's push for the PDGA to get a lot of women involved. And instead of them saying, Hey, this is going to be a major. If they said, we are going to make throw pink now U S women's championship. It's going to go on the same weekend as U S D G C and what used to be the week of U S women's. We're going to now make this a major women's amateur event. We're going to have a bunch of pro women come in to run clinics and do, um, you know, maybe like play with the pro type of things leading up into this amateur event. Like, would you be opposed to that? Um, 
Um, I don't, I don't know how to like solve this thing, uh, around like making an amateur event or, or not, or, but I would definitely, uh, favor having a major on one course and, and I think throw pink would be ideal. I don't know uh, if they can fit everyone on the same course. I feel like women had very early tea times. I don't even know if it's like normal I to see. warm up uh, in the dark, but I feel like the the first groups that went out, they probably had to drive to the course in the dark. Yeah, you had 50, you guys had 51 people in the field and yeah. NPO had, um, before the cuts, NPO had 122. You yeah. know, my so like I, I would love to play a, a major on that course, uh, so I'm not opposed to that and everything around organizing these things or reorganizing oh. these things. I, I would uh, love to someone else to figure it out. Yeah, of course, <laughs> my, of course. My first year I ever played the U.S. Championships. I teed off and it was pretty much dark. It was super early because I didn't play good. And the final round, I played with uh, Des Redding, Angela Chigfry, and Carrie Burlogger. That was my card. And they all beat me. <laughs> I did make the, we did make the cut, though. So I think we were the last card on the cut line. Um, that was a fun round. But uh, I'll never forget that. A oh, co ed action there, you yeah. Um Also, forgot to say, congrats on the marriage. That's very awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I saw Thank the, you. Uh, the video that you guys did. That's a sick video. That oh. turned out very cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Of course. Of course. It was a great day. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I'm sure. Did you guys do big wedding, small wedding? Like how many people did you? Um, there was around 60 people. I like so it. Nice. our family and, and okay. closest friends. Uh, so it was rather intimate. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like the day was just filled with love and with people that we care about. And we're just very happy. We managed to do it in basically in the middle of the season. Yeah. And, um, it was very, very beautiful and, and a day that I will remember for the rest of my life. And it went by so quickly. I can't even tell. <laughs> is there uh, is there any like unique, um, cultural stuff? that you guys maybe do in your weddings than you, than maybe like a, an American wedding. Is there anything different? Um, I don't think so. I mean, there's like, if you want to be very traditional, I guess there are some things you can do, uh, in a wedding that's maybe different from your weddings. Uh, but I'm not also very familiar with American weddings, but I would gotcha. assume it's pretty much the same. Just people coming together, you have the ceremony and, and then you just like have a party, play some games and, cake, and that's cake. about it. You have cake? Of course. Okay. All right. We hold had a big and very, very good cake. Okay. It was a, very nice. a kind of like a star of the evening. It was very nice. <laughs> that was the only thing I told Kelsey that I had to have a say in. I said, you could do whatever else you want, flowers, <laughs> music, whatever. I'm picking the cake. And uh, we ended up picking like three different flavors because <laughs> I, I need to have a little bit of everything. Um, okay. I want to go back to this win here. Um, when you said, you know, I feel like myself again, you kind of looked like old Kristen too, where it was just like, it, it looked like it was an e like an easy win the yeah. final round, like mm -hmm. the first couple holes. Sure. Right. We're working we're figuring it out. And then you get to like hole six or seven and you're just like, all right, well, Kristen's going to win this tournament. And that's kind of <laughs> like how a lot of tournaments used to be, um, did it feel that way out there? Did it feel like you were able just to kind of coast in the last like 10, 11, 12 holes? Um, not really. Uh, I feel like I just, um, I'm focused on like having the same mindset that I'm going into the round with, um, just focusing on the shot at hand. And, and like I said, don't let, any like fears come into my mind and um just be very like brave and and confident uh but i remember when i nailed that shot over the water on hole five yeah um, i feel like that was a huge confidence boost for me i was like okay 
things are going very well for me. I just have to keep doing what I'm doing. And so, yeah, and I was playing su super clean. I was not getting into trouble. And um, so, yeah, I did feel like my old self again and, and didn't let anything really like bother me. Um, so it was very nice, but, um, I'm never thinking about like winning or, or lifting up the trophy before the game is over. Silas, uh, Silas is our producer here. He actually just went out and played USDGC. Silas, do you have anything to say to Kristen on her shot on hole five? Can you relate to that shot in any way? Oh my goodness. Well, I'll just say we that no is... audio. <laughs> What? Okay, your audio's in. We got okay, you okay, okay. I was just going to say, that is a tough shot to get over that water. <laughs> it is a lot further than it looks, Kristen, so props to you. That is an insane shot. Thank you. Know, you. I, was ta I was talking with him afterwards, and it, it is, it's one of those things where, like, a lot of times, camera, the camera just doesn't do it justice, mm -hmm. and you, like, he was telling me, uh, he played with Connor, one of our editors, and he was telling me about that hole of where it's, like, you get up to your disc and you're like, all right, all right, we're going to go over the water. And then you like shoot it and you're like, all right, we're laying up. We're laying up. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a more challenging shot when you're out there too. Cause also those trees on the right, they don't look like there should yeah. be in your way, but yeah. they are in your way. If you, if you tug it a little bit, it's going to hit those trees and go OB. Yes. And you have to have the, the speed right you have the uh, have the angle right and the correct height so you can like make sure it doesn't like fade into the water but gets close to the pin so so yeah um that was like i think i felt the same way during european open on whole um, what's the island hole um 16 16 mm -hmm. yeah when I knew I had to make it to the island and uh, when I executed the shot perfectly, it, I had the same feeling. I just remember the feeling that, okay, this was a tough shot, but I did it. And um, yeah, it's, it's very, very uh, pleasant feeling. <laughs> Would you like to see courses have like 10 to like 12 of those shots? Cause a lot of times right now we're playing courses where there's one, two, maybe three shots if we're lucky like that, where you're just like, I have to execute this. Would you, do you think that's like the evolution of course design for FPO and MPO of having more shots that are like that difficult? Uh, well, right now it's very hard to uh, imagine uh, every other shot being so stressful. Yeah, <laughs> I think some of the athletes would collapse under <laughs> uh, pressure. I mean, we have to have some breathing room, but uh, uh, sure. Uh, I guess it's, I mean, it's very exciting for the audience. And of course, as a player, uh, it's, it's so awesome to execute your shots the way you want to. And um, when everything is working, it's, it's a joy. But when you're a little bit off mm. on these kinds of shots, you could be so harshly punished. So I think a couple of shots like that is okay, but like too many is, is maybe an overkill. Yeah, I think that hole does a great job because if you throw a, a really, really bad shot, you don't, yeah. you don't, you don't get to go over to the, the yeah. other side. And if you throw like, you know, we saw a B shot, like a B shot was pretty good. And we've seen a lot of a B shots when it comes in those hyzers, Yuli, we see a lot of times those oh, yeah. dig a lot of action. Yeah. And his got, his just got a really bad skip and, uh, but yeah. he didn't get punished as bad by just being on the backside yeah. there. So I think that hole does a really, like you're saying, it does a really good job of, it punishes really, really bad shots and just hurts you a little bit if you throw a little bit off. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a good one. Now, you did make me, I don't know, Yuli, if you want to throw your name in this hat as well, that's fine. I can't remember if you said the same thing as I did. Um, but you kind of made me eat my words a little bit on this podcast because at the beginning of the season, I was kind of down on you. I was like, what's going on? What's happening? Chris, what, what, what is going on? Right. And, Obviously, there's going to be a little bit of that because of how dominant you were in the previous season. I was just really confused to see what was happening. But when you look at actually your season this year, you won seven times. One of those is a major. You had a phenomenal season. But 
Do you get any pressure of where you're like, I have to try to one up myself from the last season? Because if you just look at that, that's like one of the best seasons we've seen in mm-hmm. FPO in quite some time. But when you compare it to what you did the previous season, it's, do you get that pressure? Do you feel that? Um, of course I can feel it and I can feel my position like in disc golf changed, uh, compared to like a couple years back. Um, I, I get a lot of attention. doesn't matter if I'm winning or if I'm like fifth or sixth, doesn't matter. Whatever I'm doing, people are watching and paying attention. And, um, like you said, like, I, I don't even think I had, um, very like bad placements Mm-mm. even not early in the season i think sixth was the worst and i did get like three wins uh in in the pro tour uh and also got th- uh, thousand rated uh which is any uh an, a historic moment for fbo did so you make a disc oh, did you make a disc yes <laughs> let's go <laughs> thousand so rated disc was- baby yeah. Uh, so there were a lot of good things happening, but um, I do feel like those fifth and sixth pl- places in majors sor- sort of like overshadowed the good things because um, people are expecting a lot out of me and I am expecting a lot out, out of me. And I did feel like I was losing my focus. And like I said, uh, at one point, I didn't really feel the same hunger I felt last year. Of mm. course, I'm going into the tournament and I want to win. But um, I noticed this year that I don't really get the nerves when I step onto the first tee. And I usually did get nerves. Like my knees were a little bit wobbly and I was like a little bit shaky. Uh, so I was a little bit confused and I think I'm, I've been just trying to like soak it all in what's been going on because we're changing. We're all changing uh, every moment. And um, I'm just trying to integrate that new sort of thing that's going on, I guess, and making peace with, uh, with, some of the changes um yeah it's it's been a challenge at times but at the same time i do feel like i've had a very good season uh and every like uh tournament that i won or or wherever i've placed has taught me something and and helps me to be a better player um so obviously you set such a high bar that then everybody's going to look at it and just the eye tests, right. From last year to this year, we saw that a little bit of your play kind of being a little shaky at some of those tournaments. And obviously we have this podcast every week and I'm, I've, I feel like I've been a pretty big critic of yours because of how good you are. And then we see these performances and it's not fair what the media does, but it's kind of the job of us. Right. Um, and I said that, you taking the time off that you did was a bad thing. Well, obviously you're hurt. And my point was because now you're letting the other great win women win. So we see other, uh, other FPO players get their first wins of the season, right? Or their first wins ever. Mm -hmm. And I would come on this podcast and say, this isn't good because then when she comes back, these, these women are going to have the confidence to be able to take her, her down. Have you seen the competition rise? this year compared to years past and have you seen anything in the other comp players the competition that you're like okay it's a little bit different now and is that part of the reason or no uh i i have seen that the competition is tighter uh we could already see it in the beginning of the season we had so many uh different winners um uh, and um I think a lot of the uh, tournaments averaged over a thousand. So you had to play over thousand rated rounds to win a tournament. And um, I don't think I had to do it as much last year. Okay. So I can see the, the skill set 
improved amongst the field. Uh, but I don't think necessarily that it has anything to do with me or I don't want to make this association. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I am just focused on, on me and, and my ab abilities. And when I took some time off, I, I did not think about any other athletes or, or how this will affect their game or, that's our job. Or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was just worried about myself and how I can like recover from the injury and yep. how can I play and come back. So I wasn't really worried about the competition. All right. I have to ask, I have to ask this question. Okay. <laughs> Got to ask this question. How, how did it feel worlds this year? <laughs> Like, how did it feel <laughs> like yeah just like because I, I i understand there's one there's you know on one side you show up to a tournament and you get beat by someone and it's just like it was their week they were throwing great shots they were making putts they were just playing incredible but mm -hmm. you know you have evelina who was throwing the disc better than anyone by a lot mm -hmm. that week but I mean, she, I mean, she had a crazy round. I think it was round one or two at new London where I think she had a birdie putt on every hole, which is mm -hmm. very, very difficult. So she was throwing the disc ridiculous, but seeing someone struggle that much on the putting green, like did that make it was, would that make it like even more like, Oh my gosh, what's going on for you? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what was going on on the lead card because I wasn't there. So I don't know how many putts Evelina was missing or how many making. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not really aware of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had um, an interesting week, I would say. Uh, I already had a very bad weekend in Tallinn uh, on the Song Festival grounds uh, where I actually finished eighth and it's my first uh worst uh place uh, i've ever had in in disc golf pro tour uh so i was a little bit shocked what was going on and my next tournament i think it was the worlds and um, i was playing very well during doubles i was hitting the fairways but um when the tournament started uh, for some reason i was just missing all the gaps, all the fairways, my approach shots were off. Uh, my putting was still kind of good. And every evening I was thinking, okay, uh, I can turn this around. Uh, we still have more rounds to play, but for some reason I wasn't able to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it would have been, well, I don't know. I was trying to sort of force it, but you can't really force it. Uh, Not on so, those courses either. Yeah. So it just wasn't my week, I guess. I I mean, I, I feel like I made the best out of it uh, by coming in third place uh, because I do, do feel I was making so many like, stupid mistakes out there and uh did not feel myself at all and most of the time it just sucked it was horrible <laughs> to to be in that situation when you're used to like clearing clearing the fairways and and having good rounds so it was a tough pill to swallow but um i mean it's part of uh sports yeah it happens um can you give us a little more context on where you stand as a celebrity athlete in Estonia. Like where's the sport of disc golf in Estonia? You know, cause we see, you know, me and Yuli on here, we see a lot of posts and stuff of where it's like, uh, who was it? Was it the pre the president of us? Was it the president? Yeah. The president of Estonia is there. We're seeing you in like billboards, like, in major streets and stuff. And we're just like, what is happening? So can you give a little more context of like, where do you stand in the social ladder over in Estonia? And what does the sport of disc golf look like? 
I don't even know where I stand. Like, I don't really think about these things, and I don't even know if I'm the right dancer to. Like, can you go uh, to the right grocery store? Answer. Can you go to the grocery mm-hmm. store? Um. Yeah, I can go. I I do things that normal people do. I don't Are you do anything stopped? different. But um, yes, people do <laughs> recognize me. Uh, I mean, we're. Uh, a country where 1.3 million people lives. So mm-hmm. it's like a, just like a big city for you guys, I guess. Um, it is a very small country and we celebrate, uh, other Estonians where, when they're doing well, um, in their field. And I happen to be doing well in disc golf and people have recognized it. So, uh, yeah, the media outlets, um, uh, write a lot of articles about me and how I'm doing in tournaments. And so, yeah, I guess people do recognize me, but I don't know where I stand in the social no, ladder. No paparazzi I don't know where... out there yeah, hiding behind that's garbage that's cans that's trying that's to get you. <laughs> no, I don't think there's like anybody who's like targeted by paparazzi in Estonia. I don't think that's a thing. Oh, no, you can't get rich with that. In what, Estonia. Uh, what are the chances of you getting like uh, if you win worlds next year, like what are the chances of getting a parade? <laughs> like, are we, are we close to there? Is that possible? When, I think when I would win an Olympic gold medal, maybe then, oh. but like the Olympic uh, games are a huge thing for Estonians, but um disc golf is not okay. in Olympics. So I don't think uh, a parade would be considered for me. Okay. Cause you see, um, you know, you see, I see it a lot like in UFC fighters where they're not like the biggest names in here in the States, but then they go back to their country and it's like, everyone leaves, no one's working, every, everything's shut down and everyone's just coming to see them. And I, I have that same feeling for you. You go win a gold medal, come back and all of Estonia shuts down and you're just like on top of a bus, like waving to everyone. Everyone. And, uh, yeah, oh that, that'd be cool. That'd be cool to see. I don't think it's yeah. that far off. The president's coming out to events. No. I mean, it's Does maybe the president a... play. Ooh, good question. Uh, he did th- uh, try throwing. Yeah. He has <laughs> uh, thrown a disc. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He's Was it good? A disc. Was okay. It good? Yeah. Well, Hey, the fact that he just showed up and he didn't like send, you know, he could have sent 20, 30 people, underneath him i'm sure to show up but he decided to show up i think that i think that says a lot so really cool um yeah i don't know if i mentioned it uh i definitely don't think i mentioned it to you but i think that tournament just shows how because it wasn't let's be honest it wasn't the craziest course like it wasn't like playing on insane landscapes with beautiful water features and all that. But when you watched it, you thought you were watching a big event and it's because of all the infrastructure they put around it. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that continues to kind of push disc golf to where it's like, Hey, if you actually do the right stuff around an event, it can make it look a lot cooler than it actually is. Like you didn't know you were just in a park. I mean, disc golf is cool, right? Yes. <laughs> so you can, yeah, you can make it cooler, <laughs> but I mean, it, it's still cool, uh, even without all the fireworks. But I agree. Um, they made it look uh, big and grand and make us feel like very true professional athletes. And, and we got very nice treatment there. And, and I think, uh, all the people who showed up, they had a lot of fun and, and it was easy following us around, uh, on the course. So I, yeah, they did an amazing job and I cannot wait what they will come up with next year. Yeah. The, uh, the, the intro was insane. <laughs> the intro is so cool. Uh, yes. maybe, maybe a little over the top. Like we don't need that at every event, but yeah. just seeing that like, Oh man, that's, you know, kind of, it beats a saxophone to start us off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, uh, uh, okay. So last time we had you on, we didn't do this because we didn't have our stats guy. So we have a guy called Edwin stats and he puts together these like Madden rankings, if you will. Basically these are like, um, these are your statistics in a zero to 100 scale. And it's based off of you and the field around you. 
So this is uh, 85 is the average. And again, it's based off your statistics. The only one that's kind of subjective is the power. So scoring is 99. Power is 90. Your accuracy is 96. Your scramble is 95. Your putting is 93 for an overall rating of 97. And Paul wants to uh, count me out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he that's does. Interesting. He does. He does. He does. I think that's the highest uh, we've ever seen. Uh, you leave the you lead the field in birdie rate. You're six in C one X putting. C uh, your tenth in C two putting. You're third in fairway. Third in green and regulations and six in OB rate and fourth in scramble. So your worst is CT, which actually leads me to the question. Do you no longer jump putt because of the whole foot fault situation? Were you like, I just want to get rid of this? Um, yes. I mean, I definitely started to contemplate about it. I had not done it before uh, because I've used this style for, for years and nobody has really like said anything or even like, I, I don't know. I just saw people using it and, and it fit my game. So I didn't really think anything of it. Uh, but then all of a sudden after every tournament, I <laughs> see people like doing screenshots of me <laughs> and only me for some reason, I see there's like so many people who do it well, you're, and they still you're winning. Do it. So, and, um, and then I was like, okay, maybe there's something else to it. And people are ac actually like, like I said, I'm under like, uh, the spotlight and, um, people are just looking to pick on stuff and, and I guess, um, I'm still going to be me, but I, I thought maybe, maybe this is something that's worth looking into and changing. Um, and yeah, so now I'm using a different kind of putting. I've been testing some, some different styles and I feel like I have to work on it, uh, this off season because, uh, I don't feel like mm, it's very accurate and that's why I'm not really making any circle two putts. Uh, it's, it's been difficult for me, uh, but I will, I will get better. I know. Yuli, do you want to tell her about our idea for you know, just getting away with jump putting and everything. What's our idea? Or do you, you want me to tell it? Yeah, you go. Okay. So my thought is, cause a lot of people are like, Oh, just move this circle further back. Move this circle. My oh, thought, your idea. Oh my, my gosh. thought is <laughs> we just say like anything inside of a hundred feet. Right. Or maybe it's different than FPO, right? Maybe FPO it's anything inside of 60 feet you have to putt the way we putt right now inside of circle one, right? You have to, um, you can't finish in front of your disc and then anything outside of that, you can finish in front of your disc. And as long as you jump, as long as you leave from behind your disc, you don't have, you can release the disc whenever. So an idea would be like, let's say you're like stuck behind a tree and you're trying to figure out how to get around it, you just take a horizontal sprint and jump from <laughs> behind your disc. And as you're flying through the air, get around the tree and throw it. Or if you're 65 feet away, you know, long jump, start running and jump behind your disc and like float five feet, 10 feet in the air and then putt. Then that completely removes all foot faults. No, there's no foot faults anymore. A lot of injuries, a lot of injuries are going to happen. Well, people would have to practice it. People would have to learn and figure it out. But, mm -hmm. but the football thing, like what you're saying, like the only way it really, you can tell if someone is like releasing the disc and their foot's off the ground is screenshots. Like to the naked mm -hmm. eye, it's almost impossible for us to be able to tell, like yeah. to be able to look at your feet and look at when the disc is released at your hand. It's like really difficult to see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's true. Uh, so I think it's just every player's responsibility to like make sure they're following the rules. And I'm I'm not really worried about any, anyone else. Uh, again, I'm just uh, trying to make sure that I follow the rules. So now lately I've been 
working on this sort of like strap straddle and step forward. I don't think that there should like, like you can see it with your eyes that there shouldn't be any problems there. Oh, so we might see a better circle two putter from Krista next year is what you're saying. <laughs> That's interesting. Make, that make you, Yuli eat his words some more. Oh mm. man, I I I didn't a, know. You, cru- you you crushed everything that I've ever said. Like one time, not one time, but for a while, I was like, "Oh, she can't win from behind." And then you came back like, <laughs> yeah, like the <laughs> next tournament, open, like nine shots or something. I'm like, "All right, that theory's out of the out of the question." But I think. I think it's, it's important to like find little critiques of people. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people in disc golf, here's where I sit. When you're so good, it is hard to critique people. And it's, and it's tough because people don't want to look bad too. And on this show, we, I got to find stuff. I got to find stuff. With that being said, without a question, you are the best player on tour. And if you play good and you can ask Brody when you play good, he can attest for this. I have said on camera, nobody's beating you. <laughs> that's just the facts. So that, I'll leave, I'll leave it at that. Sounds I'll leave a it lot at that. That's my, like, that's Sounds like, like my, I'm sorry. Yep, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to dial it back a little bit. I'll throw the compliment in there so that, you know, it's not all bad. Yeah. Big well, fan. I'm just full of surprises, <laughs> you know? Uh, big shout out from Wes. He's been a member for 18 months and says, congrats on the win, Kristen. So there you, you go. There you go. A non, a non Yuli for you. Someone that is rooting you on. Oh, here um, we go. Yeah. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> uh, but Kristen, we'll let you go. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, do you have anything coming out? Any disc, any sponsorship promotions, anything like that for the people, any mm-hmm. announcements? Um, not at the moment, uh, just prepping for the uh, tour finals and wrapping up the season and, and you will hear about announcements, uh, whenever they come up and, and thanks again for having me here. Of course. It's always a pleasure. Always welcome. Thank you so much, Kristen. Have yeah. a wonderful evening and good luck this week.